Was there any town community that believed after seeing the punishment and its fate at that moment saved it from the punishment? The answer is none except the people of Eunice or Jonah. Now remember the time of Jonah, Eunice alayhi salam, it said that all the people had denied the prophet Eunice alayhi salam. They had denied him. Remember he went into the belly of the whale. Then it said that afterwards, when he came back the second time around, it said that the whole town, they had believed it became most of 200,000 people. This was in the town of Iraq for the prophet Jonah alayhi salam. When they believed, we removed from them the torment of disgrace in the life of the present world and permitted them to enjoy for a while. So at first they all had disbelieved. So they were out of the grace of Allah for the law. Then when Jonah came back out, because remember, brief, brief, uh, uh, brief reflection, brief reminder. The prophet Jonah or the prophet Yunus alayhi salam, this is Jonah in the whale. Y'all heard the story of Jonah in the whale? Okay. The prophet Jonah, Allah for the law had commanded him to go to his people. And, and, and this is modern day Iraq. They have the tomb or the grave of Yunus alayhi salam in Iraq right now. A lot of stuff happened in Iraq. Babylon, that's Iraq. Yunus alayhi salam, that's Iraq. Iraq. So Allah Sala had commanded Yunus alayhi salam, Job, to go to Iraq and give them the deen. Long story short, Yunus alayhi salam, he went to the people, gave them da'wah. They didn't listen to him. Yunus alayhi salam, he became impatient. Man, they ain't listen to me, man. I'm cool, I'm gone. He disobeyed the commandment of Allah. So guess what happened? They said he was getting ready to get on the boat. And as he was on the boat, it was a big storm or something. Now back in the time, they believed in omens and stuff like that. So they drew lots to see who was the bad omen. And it came to Yunus alayhi salam. So what they did with Yunus alayhi salam was threw him overboard. Man, you must be the bad omen, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. We to throw you overboard, man. So it said that when they threw him overboard, a whale swallowed him alive. And Yunus alayhi salam was in the belly of the whale alive. And it says in the top scene that he was burning from the acid of the stomach. So he was in there. He went from sugar to boo-boo. He was a prophet doing what Allah told him. He denied or went against what Allah told him, became impatient, and then found himself in the belly of the whale getting burned up by the acid of the stomach of the whale. And he said he cried in the whale. As Forgiveness from Allah SWT in the whale. He made the dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min adharameen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min adharameen. La ilaha illa anta. There is no God except you. Ya Allah subhanaka. Glory be to thee. Inni kuntu min adharameen. Verily I have been of the wrongdoers. Ya Allah. Please forgive me. Man, I'm sorry. For what? For being impatient and not doing what Allah had commanded them to do. To preach this deen. To give it to the people. He became impatient and he left his post. Allah told him to give the deen, be a da'i, man, advocate this deen to the people, and he left his post. Man, I'm cool, man, they ain't listen, man, I'm cool, man. And found himself in the belly of the well. And he said that he cried out to Allah. He made stuck father to Allah. He made tawbah to Allah, and guess what? Allah spit him back out. So now he had a second time around. Second time around, second, uh, Allah humbled him. He was getting burned up by the acid in the belly of the whale. It said that the whale spit him out and he was on the shore naked, burning up. And he had to get the leaves and stuff to get healed and all this other stuff. And Allah gave him some type of water to drink and his body became healed. And he went back with a second bigger to the people. This is in the top seer. And this time he went around, he came with a different motivation. And it said that the whole town, 200,000 of them, took shahada or accepted the deen of la ilaha Allah. Okay, continuing. And had your Lord will, those on earth would have believed, all of them together. So will you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then compel mankind until they become believers? He said, man, you can't do it for Allah, will it? He's the one that can guide mankind, not you. It is not for any person to believe except by the leave of Allah. Again, it is not for any person to believe except by the will of Allah. Be ithnillah. So guidance is from Allah. It don't matter. It ain't from you, man. It ain't because you got the best dictation. You know, you got the gift of gab, and you can say it this way and that way. And Well, I gave him Ahmadidat. I gave him Krishna Muslim dialogue. That don't matter. Guidance is from Allah, and only by the permission of Allah. Only by the leave of Allah. And he will put the wrath on those who are heedless. Those who don't want to reflect. Those who don't want to pay attention. He'll put the wrath of Allah on them. Say, behold, all that is in the heavens and the earth but neither 
verse or ayats nor warners benefit those who believe not. It don't matter. Whatever ayats, whatever signs, whatever warners, they will not benefit those who believe not. It don't matter. They will not benefit if they don't believe. It don't matter. And one ayat Allah subhanahu wa said that he will send the malaika. He said even if an angel came to him and looked at him dead in his face and books came down from heaven itself, they still won't believe if Allah wants them to believe. Time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they seen the miracles with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they still didn't believe. Musa alayhi salam, he came with nine ayats, he came with nine miracles with the staff and all of that, the plague and the blood and the frogs and the, all of that, they still didn't believe because Allah didn't want them to believe. Guidance is from Allah. Then do they wait for anything except for the destruction like that of the days of the men who passed away before them? Say, what? Y'all keep on doing it. I'm going to give you exactly what I gave to other people before. Say, wait then. I am too with those among those who wait. He said, what, man? Y'all still want to keep doing what y'all doing? You don't fear what I did to the other people of old? You don't fear getting drowned? You don't fear me uh, making the earth, you know what I'm saying, open up on you? You don't fear me drowning you? Okay, then wait. Keep waiting. I got something for you. Keep waiting. I got something for you. Go ahead and keep whistling. I got something for you. Keep waiting because I'm going to wait too. And we're going to see who's going to win in the end. Then in the end, we save our messengers and those who believe. He said, because in the end, we're going to save the believers. We're going to save the messengers and those who believe. You of the Mu'mini, Allah said he's going to save you. That's our inspiration right there. Allah going to save us. Keep pushing. Thus, it is incumbent upon us to save the believers. Allah says, man, it is wajib. It is incumbent upon us to save the believers. So it's wajib upon Allah. He said it's mandatory that he save the believers. So if you strive to be in the Mu'mini, Allah said, man, he got you. Matter of fact, he has made it decreed and written that he got you. That's powerful right there. Because that means that if you're striving to be in the Mu'minin, or you are of the Mu'minin, then guess what? Allah got you and he's going to save you. He said it's incumbent upon him. He don't make it mandatory that he saves you. That's raw. So all I got to do is strive to be in the Mu'minin and be in the Mu'minin. And Allah said he's going to save you. So don't worry about the, 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 don't worry about the Munafikin. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Say, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O oh, you mankind, say, O oh, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O you mankind, if you are in doubt as to my religion, Islam, then know that I will never worship those whom you worship besides Allah. But I worship Allah who causes you to die, and I am commanded to be of the believers. And it is revealed to me, direct your faces, direct your face, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, entirely towards the religion of Hanifa, the religion of monotheism, and never be of the Muslim king, meaning never be of those who worship idols. And invoke not besides Allah any such that will neither benefit you nor harm you. But if in case you do so, then shall certainly you be of the volley mean. You'll be of the wrongdoers, man. Don't worship nothing else but Allah. And if Allah touches you with harm, there is none who can remove it but he. And if he attends any good for you, there is none who can repel his favor, which he causes it to reach whomever of his slaves he wills. So if he wants bad for you, guess what? You can't stop it. He said if he wishes for good to come to you, he want to bless you with all these beautiful things and barakas and rahmah and whatnot, money, children, wives. Man, you can't stop that. If it's already decreed, Allah going to give it to him. You can't stop none of that. And he is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Say, O oh mankind, now truth, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, has come to you from your Lord. So whoever receives guidance, he does so for the good of his own nafs. And whoever goes astray, he does so to his own loss. And I am not set over you as a wakil, right, of your affairs to oblige you to guidance. And many men, I'm not here. I can't guide you. I'm only here to warn you. And, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow the revelation sent to you and be patient until Allah gives judgment. And he is the best of judgment. So in this verses, a lot of wisdom in this, a lot of, a, a, a lot of inspiration in this. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, he starts, uh, he gives us three examples. First, he talks about Noah, right? Drowned, and they thought he was crazy, and only a few people believed with him. Then he said, okay, then, now I'm going to tell you about Moses. Drowned, only a few people. Then he gave us the, the acknowledgement that only a few people believed because they were scared of Pharaoh, right? Like some of us scared of the government, scared of, you know what I'm saying, the Kufar, and, you know, scared of practice our deed, and, Man, they're going to persecute us, man. And, you know what I'm saying? Man, I'm going against the norm. Uh, man, I don't want to wear hijab, right? I, 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 whatever it may be, I don't want to grow my beard. But Allah says, man, those who believe, they put their trust in the law. Man, we put our trust in the law. Stay in the Salat al-Mustaqim. 
Then Allah Sallallahu gives us the example of Yunus Sallallahu Sallam or Jonah in the well. So now he tells you, man, hey, if you don't do what he tells you to do, you might end up in the belly of the well or some of us in a jail cell. Crying out to her, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, get me out of here. Some of us been in the jail cell. Y'all know how it is when y'all back in the police car or in the jail. Hey, mama. Send me some, send me some, 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 well, well. Uh, I need some money on my, my mama, I'm sorry. You was, you was killing Joe on the street. You was hard like concrete on the street. Shoot him up, bang, bang, big dope dealer. Hey, mama, can you tell them to collect some money for me? Mama, I'm sorry. Huh? You like Jonah in the belly of the whale? I promise, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Huh? And Allah SWT gave us the example of Yunus and Islam. But he also tells us in another ayat in the Quran, he said, do you not see those that when they're on the sea and it starts, the storm comes, and they cry out to Allah sincerely. He said, but when he saves them, they revert back to what it was that they was doing. They go back to that shirt. They got a lot of people too. They go to jail and whatnot, cry and read the Bible. They they all in the salad and everything, boy. They said they get to the door, they throw the Quran and the Bible in the trash. Well, that is, I'm back. Forgot everything they don't cry about. Forgot about everything they don't make uh, uh, an oath to a loss for the law. And he said that they go back to that disbelief. So we got two examples. Those who make an oath or a promise and cry out to Allah and they go back to what it is, Allah said that he got some for them, man, it's going to be destroyed. He said, but those like Yunus alayhi salam, he went, cried out to Allah, came back and did what he was supposed to do and guess what happened? Alhamdulillah, but Allah to me, he was a, one of the best da'is. 200,000 people accepted the deen under Yunus alayhi salam on his second time around. La ilaha anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam said, those who make the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam, it is ever heard. The du'a that he made when he was in the belly of the whale, I'm going to write it down for you. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam said, anyone who makes the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the belly of the whale, it's ever heard. So when you pray and you ask Allah for this, and you end it with, la ilaha anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al he said, your du'a will be answered. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu there was no God but you, Ya Allah. Glory be to thee, Ya Allah. Verily, I was one of the wrongdoers. This is the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. He said, whoever makes the dua of Yunus alayhi salam, you make dua and you end it with this. You make the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. He said, your dua is ever heard. Ya Allah, I was of the wrongdoers. Ya Allah, forgive me, Ya Allah. Accept my dua, Ya Allah. La ilaha illa subhanaka inni kuntu min al Whatever you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa for, man, put this with it. Man, Allah subhanahu wa said he'll answer it. People want to ask, what, man, how, what, what? Man, if you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you make dua like you take to make dua, you add these sunnahs like that, and you wonder why people get their duas answered, man, because we follow the sunnah. The Prophet Muhammad said, when you get it to the sajda, make dua, because your dua is ever heard in the sajda position. Is y'all doing that? Make dua like this. He also said, when you make dua, make salli upon the Prophet. In the beginning, in the middle, and the end of your dua. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad wa Sita. Are you doing that? He said in between the Adhan and the Aqama, make dua. Are we doing that? Do we, I'm going to try to take advantage of it. This time, I'm going to take advantage of it. That time, I'm going to take advantage of between the Adhan and the Aqama. You know what I'm saying? So, inshallah, I'm going to make salli upon the Prophet. In the middle, the end. Inshallah, man, so I can get my dua heard. I want my dua to be He said, I am what my servant thinks that I am and I'm capable of doing what my servant say, thinks that I'm capable of doing. So if you believe in your dua, you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man, don't be surprised if he start answering your duas. It's not impossible. It's easy for Allah. Kum fair kum. Being it is. Ya Allah, bless me with a million dollars. Man, you ain't gonna... La ilaha illa subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalameen Wubu in the sajdi All in between the dhan and the karma Alamu sali ala ala Watch me It's easy but it's not even hard for Allah Kun fam Allah is the one that created all of this It's it, a car that, It ain't nothing but Allah's for Allah It's nothing You have to believe it to receive it Period La ilaha illa subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalameen and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that if you make the dua of Yunus alayhi salam, then your dua will be ever heard. Then you say, oh Allah, and I ask you by the dua of Yunus alayhi salam, because you said 
those who make the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam, that our du'a has ever heard. So I ask you, by the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam, la ilaha illa subhanahu wa ta'ala inni kuntu alameen, ya Allah accept my du'a, ameen. And you got to end your du'a with ameen. Rasulullah s.a.w. said, end it, seal it with ameen. Any du'a you make, end it with ameen.